trig identities. The learning goals for this video are to remember a few basic trig identities and to be able to derive other identities from these basic ones. So the first trig identities are not really identities, they're more definitions in my mind. Uh, and what I mean by that is I usually think in terms of doing calculus on the trig functions sine of theta and cosine of theta, but often you'll be given problems that involve the tangent, cosecant, secant, or cotangent. And I prefer not to remember derivatives or other identities um, for each of these functions separately, but instead to think of them as all being defined by functions sine and cosine. So what do I mean by that? The tangent of theta is just uh, the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. The cosecant is just one over the sine of theta. The secant is one over the cosine of theta. And the cotangent is the cosine of theta over sine of theta. So if I were to face a question that expected me to take the derivative, for example, of the tangent function, I would approach that by writing it down as a sine of theta over cosine of theta and now take the derivative using the quotient rule. <clears throat> Similarly for these other ones. So next, some actual, what I think of as actual identities. So for example, symmetries. So the sine and cosine function have some interesting relationships. For example, if you shift the sine function to the left by pi over two, you get the cosine function. And if you shift the sine function to the right by pi over two, you get minus the cosine function. So that's one of the types of symmetries. Another one is the even and odd symmetries. The sine function is an odd function and the cosine is an even function. So the next few identities are a little bit harder to remember, uh, but they are related to each other. And so uh, I'm gonna give you um, a way of remembering one of those identities. And this is a hard way to remember it, but it's nice to see how it actually works if you wanna go through this. Uh, what this diagram shows you is all of the relationships between um, the cosine of the sum of two angles and the sine of sum of two angles in terms of all of the parts. So how do you get a diagram like this? First we start off with the question, what is the cosine of the sum of two angles or the sine of the sum of two angles? So we can write down the unit triangle or the triangle on the unit circle. In other words, the hypotenuse is length one and we put the angle alpha plus beta in the corner. And now we know that the side opposite that angle will be the sine of alpha plus beta and the side adjacent to it will have the value cosine of alpha plus beta. But if we construct the following three triangles, so the first triangle we construct is this one here and the way we construct it is we split this angle in the corner down here into an alpha and a beta and we draw a line out as far as we need to go and then draw a perpendicular to that line that touches this corner. So that gives us a new triangle that has a hypotenuse one as well. And because this is a hypotenuse one and the angle here is beta, we know this side will be cosine beta and this side will be the sine of beta. So next we have another right angle triangle down here by dropping a perpendicular straight from this corner. And now we can conclude because the hypotenuse is cosine of beta, this, is, this triangle here is uh, similar to one in which we have a one here, a cosine of alpha here, and a sine of alpha here, but we've scaled all of the sides by cosine beta. So we now can write down that this side is, for example, the sine of alpha cosine of beta, and this side is the cos of alpha cos of beta. And finally, we have another triangle up here left over in this corner with an angle alpha, and in a similar way as down here, we now have a triangle with hypotenuse sine of beta. So the corresponding sides, the opposite, the angle will be sine of alpha sine beta and the one adjacent will be cosine alpha sine of beta. Now, when we ask the question, what is the cosine of alpha plus beta? We can just look at this diagram and see that the cosine of alpha plus beta is just the full length of this side, which if we refer to the bottom here, is just the cosine of alpha 
cosine of beta, which is the length of this whole side, minus this extra piece here that is not part of this side of this triangle. So that would be minus sine of alpha sine of beta. So this is really an important and valuable uh, trig identity. Um, we have another one hiding under here. This one we can also easily write down from this um, diagram, and that is that the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to the sum of these two quantities, which is the sine of alpha cos of beta, which is this side here, plus the sine of beta cos of alpha. Okay, so why do I say that these are important ones? Because from these two, we can get a whole bunch of other ones. In particular, from this one, we can get a bunch of other ones. If we are interested in knowing the cosine of two times an angle, we can just plug in alpha and alpha here, and that means that we get cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha, and that gives us the cosine of twice an angle in terms of the cosine and sine of the angle. We can do the same thing with sine. So the sine of two times alpha is equal to the sine of alpha cosine of alpha, because we've replaced beta by alpha here. And that happens exactly twice, so we get two times that. So these are the identities for calculating the cosine of twice an angle if you know the sine and cosine of the angle itself. Next, we can also take the cosine of zero, which is, we know that's equal to one, but it can also be written as the cosine of alpha minus alpha. And now I play, I, I, I can use this formula up here, this equation, this identity up here, with beta replaced by minus alpha. And that is cosine of alpha cosine of minus alpha minus sine of alpha sine of minus alpha. Because the cosine function is even, this minus sine can be removed. And because the sine function is odd, this minus sine can come out front, canceling this one. And we're left with cosine alpha cosine alpha, which is cosine squared alpha, plus sine squared alpha. And this is also a disguised version of um, Pythagoras' theorem, which says that the square of one side plus the square of the other side is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Now, once we have this identity, combine that with this one here, and we can write down the cosine of two alpha will be equal to the cosine squared of alpha minus and now I can solve this one for sine of alpha, and I get 1 minus cosine squared alpha. And so altogether, this guy is equal to cosine, oops, cosine squared alpha times 2, because I have one here and another one there with the minus and the minus, minus 1. Now, we already have a formula for getting the cosine of a twice an angle in terms of the cosine and sine of the angle. But now if we solve this one for cosine squared alpha, we can actually go the other way. What I mean by that is we can get the identity cosine squared alpha is equal to one plus cosine two alpha divided by two. And that's just solving this identity here for cosine squared alpha. So if you know the cosine of twice an, al uh, an angle, you can figure out the cosine squared of the angle. And you can square root it so you get an explicit expression. So here we have one derived identity. And then here we have two other derived identities that, in a way, there's also the 
very familiar one here, that all come from these two, in fact, really from the cosine one. So another set of identities can be derived from this one that we've already got. Let's switch this to theta plus cosine squared theta equal one. So if we want to now express this in different terms, we can, we can change its form to put it in terms of, say, tangent functions or secant functions. How do we do that? Well, if we divide all the way through this equation by, say, sine squared of theta, then we get the identity 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. And then if we instead divide through by cosine, so let's divide this by cosine squared theta all the way across. Now we can write down another one. This is the tangent squared theta plus 1, and that's equal to secant squared theta. So that gives us two new identities from one of these derived ones. And you'll notice that all of these come from the fact that cosine of alpha plus beta is given by this expression. So this is a convenient one to remember, and then if you have a bit of time, you can derive all of these as well in turn. Or you can memorize them all.